Hello students, in the last class we were discussing about fruit beverages, so that includes different types of fruit beverages, how they differ from each other, so what are fresh juices, what are juices which can be consumed readily like your RTS nectar and what are the various type, other types of beverages like your squash, crush and then syrups, so how they are being served before consumption. So how do they differ in terms of their TSS, juice content and acidity, like right? uh, apart from that we have discussed about how they are being prepared, like uh, right from their um, selection of the fruit to sorting, washing and juice extraction, and then removing the air by deaeration, filtering the juice and uh, clarifying the juice by using different methods so that you will get a clear and purified juice isn't it so finally in the last class we have ended up somewhere uh, after adding sugar so we have prepared sugar and then we have added we have prepared juice and then added sugar right so the next step is uh, preservation of these prepared juices hope uh, everyone of you have gone through the previous lecture hope it's interesting and uh, you have understood each and every aspect of it so in this class we will discuss about uh, various methods of preservation of juice so how the juice so that has been prepared and how it is preserved for a longer periods of time so today we are going to discuss about this aspect how these uh, fruit juices or beverages are preserved for a longer periods of time so basically all these fruits and vegetables are highly perishable so once you extract the juice so it gets fermented or it gets spoiled so easily so how to prevent it it being getting spoiled so it does get spoiled isn't it if you keep it for a over period of long uh, longer periods of time it gets spoiled and cannot be consumed but how so these uh, juices can be preserved for a longer periods of time without undergoing any kind of spoilage it can be done by using different chemicals or by heating them and so we have seen in the principles of preservation so there are three principles so microbes self decomposition and uh, contamination by the external organisms like mammals or bats or whatsoever the mammalian organisms fruit beverages which are consumed readily like without uh, uh, diluting them like your fruit juices are ready to serve drinks and even nectars so they are preserved by pasteurization by heating or also they can also be preserved by using certain chemical preservatives but certain juice certain beverages like your squashes crushes syrups and cordials so which usually we dilute it before consuming isn't it so these are the ones so these are uh, going to be diluted before consumption so we diluted in the ratio of 1 is to 3 so while consuming uh, by before serving so such uh, beverages are uh, preserved by using uh, chemical preser preservatives like your potassium metabisulfate or sodium benzoate in this lecture we will discuss about various methods so that can be used to prevent such spoilage and preserve these fruit beverages so in the previous classes uh, we have discussed about various methods of preservation based on the principles that uh, are prevailing in the principles of preservation they can be like by applying some heat like in the case of uh, pasteurization or uh, by creating aseptic conditions so that is uh, aseptic processing or by using certain chemical preservatives like your uh, sodium benzoate and uh, potassium metabisulfate or by using sugar as a preservative or even by using certain techniques like your freezing or drying so wherein in freezing you will be preventing the multiplication at a fast rate and even drying so you will be removing the moisture uh, freely available to the microbes thereby you will prevent the microbial spoilage and even carbonation so wherein it will create anaerobic conditions and even in the case of uh, filtration so you remove the 
micro organism micro organisms so you use certain uh, specific filters like your germ pro filters for removing micro organisms specific to certain microbes so oh, in this particular lecture we'll be discussing one after the other various methods so how they are employed in preservation of these fruit beverages first method of preservation is by using high temperature so this is the temperature which you employ to kill the microbes or denature or kill them by applying high heat so that is your pasteurization so this is the most common method which is usually employed in the case of milk industry so for preservation of milk so you use high temperature for a very short time so that particular kind of temperature in which juice is also heated to uh, 100 degrees celsius or slightly below that temperature so that will kill the microorganisms which cause spoilage so you apply a heat which is uh, 100 degrees celsius uh, slightly less than that so for a specific period of time so that the microorganisms gets killed so it is basically about the uh, the step which is involved in the first step of preservation principle isn't it so we will be removing the microorganisms or killing the microorganisms so the spoilage is caused by microorganisms that can be now uh, killed by applying heat so in this so you are applying heat so you apply heat for around uh, 75 to 88 degrees celsius and uh, that the time varies from 30 seconds to 30 minutes so depending upon the type of uh, heating system and the nature of the juice and even the nature of the container so it depends upon the what is the container you are using and what is the kind of juice so that you are uh, use uh, that you are going to preserve and what is the kind of uh, can that you are using whether it is a um, glass bottle or whether it's a uh, container which is thicker which needs to be heated so based on that so this particular time duration varies and uh, it is a low temperature uh, for a longer periods of time that is called as LT, LT or HTST that is a high temperature for a short time so that is usually is a flash pasteurization so under pass uh, in the pasteurization you have basically three types of uh, methods so three methods are followed one is uh, holding pasteurization overflow method of pasteurization and flash pasteurization so we'll discuss about this in detail these three methods amongst the first methods of pasteurization is by holding pasteurization the name itself indicates you hold a juice in a bottle sealed bottle and then pasteurize it so pasteurization is carried out in most of the homes so this is a home scale kind of pasteurization so this is carried out at a, a cottage at a, at a scale which is suitable for the homes so if you are preparing certain juices or beverages at home then uh, the method of uh, pasteurization the method of uh, killing microorganisms is carried out by this holding pasteurization so in this method you fill the juice in the bottles so which need not be sterile but clean so you pour the bottles in a uh, clean bottles and then put the lids and then tighten them so and then so these bottles are put in uh, for pasteurization so these bottles are allowed to pasteurize uh, at a pasteurization temperature so this is not usually followed for commercial commercial scale products but when you are pouring the juice into the bottles and before tightening it tightening or sealing the bottles you make sure that you leave certain head space because you are going to pasteurize it after sealing it so that means there need to be certain head space so that whatever the entrapped air that is present in the juice need to be accumulated into the head space as you can see in the below picture it's a descriptive picture so which shows uh, the bottles are filled with juice and they are tightened with uh, caps or the seal and then there is a head space is allowed so once the juice is heated or boiled or pasteurized so it gets heated up and the entrapped air it comes out and collects in the 
uh, headspace that is provided if that headspace is not allowed so what will happen it may going to burst or it may cause damage to the bottles or it may leak so there is a necessity of leaving a proper headspace in a holding pasteurization and second type of uh, pasteurization method is overflow method of pasteurization so in this method of pasteurization you heat a juice over and above the pasteurization temperature so plus 2.5 degrees celsius higher than the pasteurization temperature so 75 to 88 degrees celsius is the pasteurization range of temperature so you heat the juice 2.5 degrees celsius higher than the pasteurization temperature and then this heated juice is poured into the bottles up to the brim so up to the brim that means you are not going to leave any kind of uh, head space so as you can see in the picture so you see the temperature pasteurization temperature plus 2.5 degrees celsius higher temperature so you are you already heated the juice with additional 2.5 degree celsius and then this juice you need to pour into the bottles so while pouring the temperature should not fall below the pasteurization temperature or even while sealing the bottle so that means the juice will be in a very hot condition so on this in this hot condition so we'll be pouring into the bottles so that too it'll be pouring and filling them up to the brim without leaving any kind of head space so you don't leave any kind of head space after that you are going to seal them and then heat them in boiling water you process them in the boiling water and then later they are allowed to cool so once these bottles are cooled so due to cooling the juice contracts and then it leaves a head space as you can see after cooling so it has formed head space so after cooling it become it uh, forms a head space where from this uh, head space is being followed so this is from the air or any kind of uh, because the juice is heated up so much that it leaves no space in the air and it is devoid of any kind of air so this particular uh, method of uh, preservation that is overflow method of preservation is followed in uh, most of the commercial preservation units the names of methods of pasteurization gives an indicative of the methods or the process involved so in the first method it's a holding pasteurization where the pasteurization is carried out so when the bottles are holding the juice and the second method it's a overflow method of pasteurization where where so you'll be filling the juice up to the brim and then you'll be filling the juice which is at a temperature over and above the pasteurization temperature so that is overflow method so the juice is overflowing from the bottle and then this particular method this flash pasteurization indicates the name itself is a flash so within a very short period of time the juice is heated and it is cooled rapidly so in a short period of time it will be heated to a very high extent that is it will be heated over and above 5.5 degrees celsius of uh, this pasteurization temperature so the pasteurization uh, this heating temperature is over and above the pasteurization temperature which is 5.5 degrees celsius above the pasteurization temperature that means 75 to 88 degrees celsius plus 5.5 degrees celsius in the case of your uh, overflow method of pasteurization that is 75 to 88 degrees celsius plus 2.5 right so in the case of flash pasteurization so this temperature is higher than the overflow method of pasteurization only thing is here this temperature so the juice at and uh, the juice uh, at this particular temperature it is going to be heated for a very short period of time so maybe few minutes to seconds so it will be heated and then it is 
rapidly cooled so during this process so whatever the juice that you are going to get will be of very high quality whatever the juice that has been prepared by this particular method that is flash pasteurization it's also called as uh, HDST method that means high temperature for a short time so when the juice is heated when a beverage is heated for a very short time for a very short time to very high temperature so under this very short time getting a cooked flavor is minimized so usually when you cook a beverage for a very longer periods of time by using LTLT that is uh, uh, low temperature for a longer periods of time so in the such cases you may have a tendency of getting a cooked flavor and even most of the nutrients they may be lost as a result of uh, this longer periods of cooking and even uh, you may lose the flavor but in the case of your uh, flash pasteurization the flavor minimum flavor loss is minimal so the flavor is retained nutrients are retained and even the juice will be uniformly cloudy so there is no formation of uh, or condensation or uh, settling of the juice and the pulp will not be like of uh, cloudy so this will be uniformly cloudy and there won't be like uh, uh, this end the bottles bottom there will be a deposition of uh, uh, cloudy nature and even the taste is also minimized the cooked taste is minimized in the case of your flash pasteurized juices or flash pasteurized beverages and even the, the beverages which you are seeing in the current slide so this is a, you are much familiar with this kind of juices in the market so these beverages are technically are prepared by aseptic processing or they are aseptically packed so you might be uh, knowing about this asepsis isn't it so asepsis or aseptic packing is nothing but keeping away the microbes so you create an environment uh, you you put everything in a pack in condition so that the microbes are free from it so you are literally keeping the microbes at bay you are literally keeping the microbes away from entering into the package or into the food so you do the entire process in a microbial free environment so you'll be having a juice which is free from microbes and a container which is free from microbes and you transfer this juice into the container in a microbial free environment so this entire thing happens in a closed and continuous system so it will be closed and continuous that means so there is no chance or scope for entry of microorganisms in it you get it so this is the reason why so this tetra packs so you might be much familiar with this the products so aseptically packed so there is no chance of microbes in this kind of beverages so these are basically they prepared by using this aseptic process so where you do the entire process in an environment which is sterile so so the container is sterile and the fruit beverage is free from microbes and then the entire process is carried out in a sterile environment or microbial free environment so here this is the temperature range varies with based on the acidity of the product yes acidity of the product it declares the temperature at which a product has to be processed higher the acidity lower the temperature isn't it or lower the pH lower the temperature or higher the pH higher the temperature do you remember the microbial uh, optimal conditions for mold yeast and bacteria so right now the most important aspect is the bacteria so the pH 
that is suitable for the growth of bacteria is more than 4.6 so that means if a juice is having a pH which is less than 4.6 so that means that particular juice is characterized by high acidity so that high acidity prevents the growth of bacteria so it discourages the growth of bacteria because of its inherent property of high acidity under high acidic conditions the bacteria will fail to grow so under such conditions you just need a temperature of 90 degrees to 110 degrees celsius so which is called as HTST sterilization or high temperature for a short time is it clear and then the fruit beverages which are having a pH more than 4.6 or less acidic so such fruit beverages are sterilized by UHT that is ultra high temperature sterilization so that involves 121 degrees Celsius and above so that's very high temperature so higher pH higher temperature lower pH lower temperature so what is the critical pH 4.6 4.6 and above is optimum for the growth of bacteria less than that is not suitable for the growth of bacteria just remember this aspect right so higher the pH higher the temperature lower the pH lower the temperature and it is vice versa in the case of if you are considering the term acidity higher the acidity lower the temperature lower the acidity higher the temperature hope you got the point and once again whatever the products that are prepared by using this kind of processing so just like in the case of your flash pasteurization in this case also the nutrients are retained and the flavor is intact and they will be having minimal cooked flavor and they are having good quality so there are numerous beverages in the market which are prepared so ranging from lychee orange mango so many uh, products are available which are uh, commercially prepared by aseptic packing till now we have seen the methods of preservation wherein it involves the killing of microbes or destruction of microbes another method which employs prevention of growth of microbes or effective control of microbial growth is by using certain chemical preservatives the two most popular chemical preservatives which are used in the process in the processing industry the active principle or the active component of them of, of it or or benzoic acid and sulfur dioxide so these are commercially used in preservation of juices pulps squashes cordials syrups RTS drinks by using these chemical preservatives so under this we have benzoic acid benzoic acid as such it is the active component or the active principle which is effective against certain microbes but as such if you use this benzoic acid directly into the juice it doesn't dissolve it won't dissolve in the fruit juice it is insoluble so that's why so they use a salt of it which is called as a sodium benzoate so the benzoates are used in preservation like your sodium benzoate benzoate is used for preservation of the juices so upon addition till release benzoic acid which will act as an active principle or active component which will preserve the juice so this benzoic acid if you look into it so who it is against it so against which microorganisms it is effective effective and in which aspect of preservation it will help the first thing is it is very effective against yeast so it is quite opposite to that of the uh, what do you call the sulfur dioxide so it is effective against yeast than the molds so it can control yeast well than the molds 
and it has uh, a least role or it cannot st stop lactic acid and acetic acid fermentation so it cannot stop fermentation and the concentration required so what is the concentration required for benzoic acid in different be beverages it again depends upon the type of the juice whether it is highly acidic or less acidic and what is the type of microorganisms that you are usually find in such uh, juices or beverages depending upon that we use so this benzoic acid so we use uh, maximum of 600 ppm of uh, benzoic acid so for juices crush syrups cordials and for uh, rts beverages we use uh, maximum of 120 ppm so that is the maximum permissible limit of benzoic acid to be added in the final product another important chemical preservative which is commercially exploited and is very effective preservative is sulfur dioxide sulfur dioxide is basically a gas and it has got its new properties even as a gas it's able to preserve the surface layer so uh, it can deposit or it can retain in its in the form of it as a gas and at the head space it can act as a preservative so, but as such we cannot place this gas into the fruit beverages so it has to be some kind of salt which can easily dissolve in a fruit juice so basically this uh, this sulfur dioxide is used in the form of a salt like your potassium metabisulfate so this potassium metabisulfate so which acts as a source of sulfur dioxide so this upon adding to the fruit juice so this salt when it is added to the fruit juice it reacts with the acid that is present in the fruit juice and starts liberating sulfur dioxide so which acts as a preservative so as such so there won't be uh, sulfur dioxide in the salt so when it is added to the fruit beverage it reacts with the acid of the acid which is present in the fruit juice and then starts liberating sulfur dioxide and later on to form sulfurous acid with the water so which is uh, present in the uh, potassium salt and then so so let's see what are the various uh, properties of this sulfur dioxide unlike a benzoic acid so which is effective against yeast here the sulfur dioxide is effective against mold spores so there benzoic acid is weaker towards molds stronger towards yeast but the sulfur dioxide is effective against mold spores as well as bacteria than yeast and it has got special characteristics there are so many special qualities of sulfur dioxide which makes it as a very good chemical preservative so it can even inhibit enzymes in it acts as an antioxidant and a bleaching agent so since it is an antioxidant it can retain so nutrients like your ascorbic acid carotene so that's why it acts as a very good preservative so that means the quality of the juice is retained uh, not only it can prevent the microbial growth like your mold spores or even the bacteria and even controlling the enzymatic action and even it has got the property of retaining valuable ascorbic acid because of the nature of sulfur dioxide as an antioxidant and also it acts as a bleaching agent so bleaching agent in the sense it removes the color and remove the color so that is a negative aspect of it so which makes it not usable in certain juices like you cannot use 
this sulfur dioxide in uh, juices like which are naturally colored like your pomegranate uh, strawberry falsa or jamun so you cannot use this sulfur dioxide because it bleaches its color and this sulfur dioxide also cannot be used in the case of tin containers so where the tin it gets reacted and forms pinholes and causes the production of hydrogen sulfide and further it may form ferrous sulfide we just have seen in the case of spoilage and canned products so which causes black deposition or even formation of pinholes so in the tin cans so this cannot be this sulfur dioxide cannot be used so in two instances the sulfur dioxide cannot be used so there is a demerit in in sulfur dioxide in its usage so it cannot be used in naturally colored fruit juices because of its bleaching nature it bleaches the color of the juice and it cannot be used in tin containers as it forms pin holes and causes discoloration of the product apart from that it has got a wide variety of advantages or uh, specific uses um, it also has uh, has the ability to retard non enzymatic browning so it, it has got ability to prevent or retard non enzymatic browning while using this juice while using this uh, preservative in uh, fruit beverages so we cannot directly add this potassium metabisulfate directly into the fruit beverage you just need to take this salt this um, potassium metabisulfate in little amount of water or little amount of little quantity of uh, juice and then first uh, dissolve it and then add it to the juice you first uh, dissolve it in a little amount of water and then add it to the juice that's how it is added to the fruit beverages and the maximum permissible limits that are to be followed while preparing fruit beverages so in the case of your benzoic acid we have seen the maximum permissible limits so similarly in the case of sulfur dioxide uh, in these are the maximum permissible limits so most importantly we should look for serial number 3 and 4 so wherein we have uh, squashes crush fruits syrup cordial fruit juice so where the maximum limit is 350 ppm so in the case of your rts it is 70 ppm is the max concentration beyond which you cannot it is not permissible fruit beverages are preserved not only because of one particular method of preservation or uh, solely because of uh, one particular method of preservation either it is like um, using high temperature like pasteurization or um, aseptic packing where you use uh, sterilization temperature for preserving the beverages so it involves a different um, mechanisms or different methods or different uh, components which will preserve the juice so you have acidity which will act as a which will act as a uh, barrier so for preventing the microbial growth right being um, high acidic in nature it prevents bacteria so just like that here also we will discuss about uh, so sugar also does act as a preservative so it will also help in preservation of the fruit beverages so basically the fruit juices which are having 66% sugar does not ferment so higher the sugar content it prevents the fermentation of fruit beverages so due to this uh, very high tss so there is no availability of uh, water so this causes very low water activity so we have discussed how the water activity will have an effect on the microbial growth so higher the denominator do you remember higher the denominator so in the case of your um, water activity that we have discussed higher the value of denominator the numerator decreases that means in the case of pure water water activity is 
if it reduces below 1 so that means the water activity is reduced so here by increasing the TSS the water activity is reduced thereby it prevents the growth of microbes not only does the sugar acts in a way of its uh, low water activity causing uh, nature but also it causes preservative action because of its osmotic nature like um, I would like to here refresh your intermittent memory where in which uh, you have different kinds of uh, concentrations around the a cell so where in which so for example so let's consider that the fruit beverage is a uh, having high solute in that like a sugar so you, you place a bacteria in that so because of the osmosis that means a bacteria is having a cell membrane so it acts as a semi permeable membrane so what is osmosis osmosis is nothing but movement of solvent from a low concentration to high concentration yeah movement of solvent molecules from low concentration to high concentration so that is from a concentration wherein the solute concentration is high so in a beverage when a bacteria is there in a beverage so all around surrounding it the solute concentration that is sugar concentration is high and the bacteria's solute concentration is low so the water moves from bacteria into the beverage so what happens to the water it gets sucked out of the bacteria into the sugar syrup so then what's the bacterial fate it dies because of dehydration so it does happen when there is a very high concentration of 65 to 66 percentage so that causes preservation of the juice by sugar preservation by freezing how does freezing help a fruit beverage preserved for a longer periods of time unlike preservation by high temperature it does not kill the microbes but it reduces the pace at the speed at which the multiplication is carried out in a bacteria so that means it retards the rate at which bacteria is multiplying another way like the growth rate of microbes is reduced so usually this optimum temperature required for uh, bacteria is way above 0 degree celsius so except some of the psychotrophic bacteria so which will grow under very low temperature except that so these bacteria they cannot tolerate very low temperature so that is being made use so for freezing the fruit juices but the thing is apart from bacteria but there will be certain chemical reactions which will be carried forward even under very low temperature but the rate at which these reactions are carried out uh, is very at a very slow pace what's the process involved in freezing of the fruit juices so the process involved is very simple so the way you carry out uh, uh, extraction of the juice and then filtration and then uh, clarifying the juice so then you carry out deaeration that is removal of the air so once you remove the air so whatever the juice is there that is subjected to uh, like uh, hermetically sealing so you put it in a can or a container and close it airtight so it contains no air in the juice then it is subjected to very low temperature of minus 18 degrees celsius so when it's subjected to very low temperature and the time and uh, duration that is taken to freeze the juice determines the quality of the juice if it is taking a longer period of time the quality of the frozen product will be poor it is taking shorter time for freezing the quality of the juice will be better or higher so that means when you are freezing a juice at a very fast rate rapidly the juice is getting frozen then the size of the particles the uh, size of the ice crystals that are formed are very less 
so lesser the size of the ice crystal so better is the quality of the fruit juice eventually less amount of colloidal matter is going to coagulate so that determines the quality of a frozen product so when it is frozen to minus 18 degree celsius so everything becomes solid except the thing that at the center of the fruit juice it remains liquid it remains a thick liquid so this form of uh, freezing will help in uh, retaining good flavor so if when the juices are exposed to very high temperatures so preheated juices so where in which there is a loss of flavor because of heating so this particular method of preservation by freezing retaining the center of the juice to be in the state of concentrated liquid it will help uh, in the preservation of its flavor whatever the juices that are prepared from this method of uh, preservation uh, will be having better qualities in terms of uh, freshness color taste and aroma preservation by drying involves a principle wherein which the microbes they require certain amount of moisture for their metabolic activities if this moisture is removed without hampering the quality of uh, the product so that it has to be consumed so till then if we remove the extent of moisture to such an extent that available water is reduced so that the microbes cannot multiply so there is no available water for the microbes to carry out their metabolism so you powder the juices by using different methods like your spray drying drum drying or freeze drying or foam mat drying so whatever the fruit juices that are prepared by this uh, drying method will be very hygroscopic in nature just like the milk powder so you know the milk powder so how it is uh, prepared like a free flowing powder so as it as and when it is um, added to the water it gets reconstituted similarly some of the fruit juices um, so just like your rasna or uh, any kind of uh, fruit powders so when it is added to the water instantly it gets rehydrated and gets reconstituted so that it will retain its uh, original color flavor and even the taste so these fruit juices they are hygroscopic in nature so that means if you remove the moisture so when they are exposed to air they are instantly absorb the moisture present in the air and they become moist so that's why these uh, fruit powders so they are sealed in air tight containers they are sealed air tight they are hermetically sealed and then prevent them from uh, rehydrating by putting some desiccants so that they retain their uh, powdered form such fruit juices so which are uh, dehydrated or powdered so these powdered uh, fruit juices can stay for a very long periods of time jog by very less pace and they are beneficial in terms of even transportation saves uh, space and money as well in this slide you can see a schematic diagram of spray drying so this spray drying involves particular process wherein which a juice when it's subjected to spray drying at the end of the spray drying you will get a product which is free flowing which is uh, very hygroscopic in nature and they are uh, uh, nutrient rich they won't be losing any kind of nutrients and even the flavor is not lost as a, as a result of spray drying so what exactly happens during this spray drying process as you can see from the top there is a feed flow so through which you feed the fruit juice so it enters the drying chamber so in the drying chamber the juice is broken down into smaller or finer droplets so when it is exposed to this finer droplets when they are exposed to high temperature of the drum so what happens so these droplets get the moisture present in them get evaporated the moisture in the fine droplets get evaporated and it be left with a powdered form which is collected at the fag end of the uh, spray dryer so the product becomes very hygroscopic 
and it is not though it is ex, uh, exposed to very high temperature but the thing is because of the evaporation that is caused to the final droplet that causes cooling of the powdered juice so evaporation causes cooling so that's the basic principle so when a fine droplet is exposed to high temperature so because of evaporation at the same time it causes cooling and preventing them to be exposed to high temperature and causing loss of flavor or loss of nutrients so this is how a spray drying is carried out so what are the products that are prepared or of a superior quality preservation by carbonation how the fruit juices getting preserved because of the carbon dioxide present in it so the carbon dioxide so how it is uh, added to the fruit juices so fruit juices or or any kind of uh, juice or any beverage when it is mixed with carbon dioxide under a very high pressure so that particular process is called as carbonation so you mix the fruit juice with carbon dioxide and that process is called as carbon dioxide that is carried out under a very high pressure so that means you are replacing or you are um, literally removing the oxygen present in the fruit juice by pressurized application of carbon dioxide so that there won't be any available oxygen or air in the fruit juice so that prevents some of the organisms so which require oxygen so you know the organisms which require those are called as obligate aerobes like your molds and yeast so they require certain amount of uh, oxygen for their growth so if the oxygen present in the fruit juice is replaced with carbon dioxide then eventually these molds and yeast cannot grow apart from its uh, preservative action in terms of causing or uh, creating anaerobic conditions it also has the property of preserving ascorbic acid because of its antioxidant nature so it reduces the oxidation of ascorbic acid and then it retains the nutrients but also gives a characteristic flavor so because of the bubbling nature of the fruit juice as a result of high pressure mixing of this carbon dioxide usually for complete inhibition of uh, microbial growth you need a concentration of 14.6 grams of carbon dioxide per liter of beverage so but it does not require that much in a fruit beverage generally it requires only 1 to 8 grams of of carbon dioxide per liter of the juice so why is this because of added advantage of presence of acid so acidity of the juice acts as an added effect or supplementary effect so it helps in prevention of microbes so by creating acidic conditions on top of that carbon dioxide if you reduce the carbon dioxide concentration to even 1 to 8 grams per liter so then also it can carry out its preservative action so that's why even under low concentration it is efficient in controlling microbial growth carbon dioxide in beverages is measured in terms of gas volume so what is gas volume gas volume is nothing but amount of gas in a beverage is absorbed so this is the gas that is absorbed in a beverage at particular temperature and pressure so that particular temperature and pressure is 7 60 mm of mercury of pressure and 15.5 degrees celsius temperature so at that particular temperature the beverage will be absorbing amount of gas amount of carbon dioxide in the beverage which is expressed in terms of milliliters so the amount of gas that is absorbed by the beverage which is expressed in ml at particular pressure that is 760 millimeters of mercury and at 15.5 degrees celsius so usually so it requires around 1.3 to 4 gas volume of carbon dioxide for fruit juices so in the market you will find different types of carbonated beverages which are not having 
your um, fruit in it so just like your sprite or limca or miranda so in, in them there is no fruit involved it is just added flavor and sugar and water so but so the, even the fruit beverages like your lime apple grape they can also be carbonated and they can be well preserved and with an added uh, taste of bubbling so which gives a characteristic taste after clarifying the fruit juices or any beverages even the wines then uh, they are allowed to pass through certain uh, germ proof filters so specific to like your yeast or bacteria so they will filter out certain bacteria and certain yeast so that whatever the juice that will be getting will be devoid of such bacteria and yeast so they will be once they pass through that filter they will take out they will remove the bacteria or yeast present in that and you will be getting the juice which is not having any kind of bacteria so such method of preservation is called as filtration so here there is no exposure to high temperature so it is just mere uh, filters so you employ them in high quality juices like grape juices or apple juice they are employed in getting a high quality product without subjecting to high temperature after understanding the different methods of preservation of the juice the final st step in preserving a juice is a bottling so we have seen different steps in the uh, preparation of the fruit juice so right from the beginning from selection of the fruit sorting and washing extraction of the juice removing the air by deaeration filtration and further clarify clarifying the juice by using different methods and then we have uh, added the sugar and then we have preserved so this juice can be preserved by using different methods that we have discussed and then final step is bottling so they need to be bottled so by putting them in in the bottles which are sterilized leaving a headspace of 1.5 to 2.5 centimeters so the ones which are uh, preserved by heat they are sealed by using corks the ones which are preserved by using chemical preservatives so they are sealed by using pp caps so pp caps are nothing but pilfer proof caps so this will prevent uh, pilferage uh, pilfer proof caps are used for the juice bottles which are preserved by using chemical preservatives so that's all about this uh, preservation of fruit juices and of unfermented beverages so next class we'll discuss about how the fermented beverages are being prepared